I'm Susan Smith, and I manage the Grief Support and Life Legacies programs for South Texas Blood and Tissue Center. I'm coming to you today with an activity that I would normally do at one of our in-person programs that we have at this time of the year, but due to COVID-19, unfortunately, we have not been able to meet in person. However, I don't want that to be detrimental to you participating in some of the activities that we do here. Today's activity that I'm doing is going to be a decorative ornament, a remembrance ornament of someone in your life who has died that you're missing at this holiday time. Um, this ornament, just so you know, plastic, in case you have kids at home, this is also a kid-friendly activity. Very easy to do. You can see that I have all sorts of materials on the table here. I want it to be materials that you can find around your house. Some of them might be Christmas related, such as tinsel type things here. This is a branch uh, that represents Christmas tree. We've got some different pom-poms, stickers, ooh, colored papers. But I also wanna take a minute right now to say as we talk about grief and the holidays, uh, these are the fall holidays. These are the November and December holidays. But let's get real, holidays happen every month of the year. So it could be that you want to put something inside your ornament that reminds you of your loved one that happens uh, in the other months. We'll talk about that. Very, very easy. Easy off lid and you can see the ornament is empty. So now we start filling it with things that remind us of our loved ones. So I'm going to start and it's about the process. Um, messy's good, grief is messy. Uh, no right or wrong way. Putting some tinsel in here. Sometimes you get creative, maybe you need a Christmas tree to uh, help it get down in there. I also think what I'm going to do now, find something to hold that, is I'm making this ornament for my parent um, who died many years ago. But one of the things that we loved doing at the holiday time was going to look at Christmas lights. So as you can see here, I've got different colored paper. For those of you who have been to one of my programs know that I really prefer to tear because grief is uneven and jagged. So I'm just going to tear a couple little pieces and then to put them in the ornament. And these represent Christmas lights that we went to see. The other thing that you might want to do with papers is write a message to your loved one you might want to write something on that paper that was a non-material gift that your loved one gave to you. Perhaps, you know, maybe you laughed every time they told a certain joke, personal to what you want that to be. Uh, I'm gonna put in a couple of pom-poms here, bright colors for happy memories, cut off a piece of the Christmas tree. One of my dad's big jokes every year is that he kept wanting to get a Charlie Brown Christmas tree and he pulled that off pretty regularly. So there's part of the Christmas tree. Um, one of the things that my dad did every year was make Rice Krispie treats. So I just went to uh, Google, started pulling up pictures. And again, doesn't have to be perfect. But I know this is a Rice Krispie treat that he loved making. My mom loved making sugar cookies with my kids. So again, Google. So let's see, which one do we want? Let's go maybe candy cane. There we go. And maybe on the back, I would write on this, you know, mom loved making sugar cookies with my kids. And you can roll that up. If you actually have a picture of your loved one, you can put it in there and we could keep going, but I think for now you get the idea. I've also got ribbon, different color ribbon, pretty much the sky's the limit. What I do use at group, you can see this box, this has a heart on it, but it also has a hole in it. When grief touches our life, it's like our heart has a hole in it. And one of the things that we do is cry and tears are healthy as we move through grief. So I actually call this my tear box. And inside, I have different shapes, tears, some are jagged, there's different colors. There's also some hearts, little hearts with a hole in it. So I think I will add a couple of tears as well because it's sad. And if you punch this out, there's a hole in that heart. 
So what I'll do as an example is, if I can get the backing off, place this on the ornament, and there's the hole in the heart. However, we also know that our loved ones are still with us. Place this to represent them at another part of it. You can also take markers and write words on your ornament that remind you of the person that died. Uh, again, sky's the limit. So no right or wrong. So there's a star. Then at the end, we can put the lid back on and a hook. If you choose to hang it on the Christmas tree, uh, some people find that it's difficult to have a tree up depending on when it is their loved one has died. I invite you then maybe to get a nice bowl, put them in a bowl or on a plate or even on a placemat. They can sit. So this is an example of our ornament. Also wanted to let you know, again, even though those are plastic for even the younger kids, um, I got these. I have all my materials here. I got either from Hobby Lobby or Walmart. You can get them anywhere, any store. But these I like, these ornaments, they're sticky when you peel that adhesive down. So the kids can still put pictures, but it adheres to the sticky part of it. Or if you want, you can glue this. So, uh, oh, and the other thing that I probably would have done in my ornament, the 4th of July was a hugely important holiday for my parents and I, so I might have gone to that page and pulled off um, a picture of the 4th of July. But again, this is something that you can easily replicate at home, and I wish you well, and even though we can't be together, please know that I hold you in my heart. Thank you.